Nearly 600 teeth, 300 claws, and 27 kinds of bird calls. Welcome to Predators of Asia and Africa. On your free virtual tour, we'll be trekking through the Fort Worth Zoo's newest, baddest, and raddest project to date. Predators was made from the third phase of the $130 million Wilder Vision Master Plan to turn the less desirable parts of the park into, you gotta see these exhibits. Before we sink our teeth into this, I want to you not just to subscribe if you're new, but to make your voice known and comment below if you could have one rare animal in your zoo, what would it be? It all begins right across from the gorillas with one of Predator's main attractions, the African lions. Their old domicile, which we'll get to later, was so unsuitable they moved the royal family to their own brand new exhibit and told the warthogs, kudu, and zebras to go somewhere else. Now it's a stretch, but this might explain why zebras did what they did to the lions in Dallas' stadium. Just a thought. I was in the presence of a king and queen, but it only took six hours to find them. If that happens to you, use your time wisely and educate yourself on the key differences between a predator and prey. This station tells and shows the differences between their teeth, the ways they run, and what perspectives they're forced to see. And there's even a mirror, essentially asking you, what do you feel like eating for lunch today? You can also pretend that you're in your own episode of the Magic School Bus, Mrs. Frizzle, parked in the perfect spot so that the left side is part of the viewing. The lions can't climb on it or anything, but it's still a cool photo op, and more importantly, a great way for kids to use their imagination. Predators looks like it begins and ends right here. So here's the fun part. You have to walk about 400 feet to see the next thing. When all of this was renovated and the sections were separated, this path couldn't pick a favorite in the divorce, so Predators and Elephant Springs share part of it. Meaning that your real life tour of Predators would also come with a side of Indian rhinos. But for now, we're gonna turn our backs on the unicorns and look for something that, to zoo nerds, is equivalent to finding a unicorn. The Storm's Stork, a medium-sized aquatic delivery bird, but their baby delivery system is very limited and excludes frogs, worms, insects, and fish because they eat them. Many like to call it the rarest stork in the world. Not sure why I just got so positive there because there's actually less than 500 left in the wild. Sounds like a lot of birds for being thought of as a unicorn, but that's because only, at most, three to five American zoos display the storm stork. Speaking of storms, you can't have them without at least a few clouds. Protecting the temple ruins is the clouded leopard. Their first name makes sense, but they are not leopards. However, they're still more closely related to big cats than some of those that are larger than them. Predators debuted with a male from Fort Wayne, Indiana, and a female from Nashville. And yes, they are here to make some clouds of their own. When you come here, remember, clouded leopards are most described as nocturnal and they're cats, so they like to sleep a lot. If you can't spot them, they're most likely in the top left corner. <laughs> what you just heard is an authentic recording that simply translates to, we are not toucans, we are wrinkled hornbills. Their species name is a little on the nose, but I could not for the life of me find out why scientists had to point out the condition of their skin. Both males and females have an extension on their beak called a cask, a hollow or spongy structure made of keratin. It's a big indicator of their maturity, but it can be used to find a date, hammer things and each other, and to amplify their calls. And it turns out, Wrinkled doesn't refer to their skin, but refers to the notches on the tip of the male's cask. I'm guessing there might have been a little construction left over, because when there's construction, there's usually a crane. Red-crowned cranes stand five feet tall, and they don't take nonsense from nobody. Their predators tend to avoid the adults and go straight for the eggs, and when they do, these parents will spam the jab button until the perp runs or loses the ability to run or breathe. 
I want to get one thing straight. This is strictly a zoo channel, but I'm left with no choice but to give you a bit of an art lesson. A satyr is a guy with goat's legs, ears, and horns. Now, what does this have to do with the satyr tragopan? In their mating season, the males will grow blue horns and a giant neck waddle, and when it's time to show off, he will inflate the horns, stand tall and mighty to show off that waddle to the ladies, and hope for the best. If that ritual just doesn't sound so dreamy to you, I don't know what will. Actually, I can name a bird that does it a little better and is a little more relevant. It doesn't come from the Edwards pheasant, but the lesser bird of paradise. They have a vibrant male and a female. Why don't you spin around for us real quick? Thank you. Instead of a bouquet of flowers, she'll receive an impressive display of feathers. Take notes, fellas. You'd think that this pattern would be enough, but she wants a world twirl and tango of a carefully choreographed dance to convince her he's okay. Birds are, they're great. They're some of nature's greatest works of art, but I think it's time to finally get back to the megafauna. So here is a really big cat. They say tigers are the largest cats in the world, bigger than jaguars, bigger than lions, which is true to an extent. This striped kitty's ancestors hail from the island of Sumatra. If we're talking about maximum weight, Sumatran tiger males can be half the size of the largest tiger. Can't tell them apart by their weight and shape? Well then look at their coat. Sumatran tigers have the most stripes, most saturated colored fur, and more tufts on the side of their face. If you don't have any other tigers to compare them to, just hope that your zoo is prepared to answer those questions like Fort Worth is. This is the most impressive part of the makeover. If you're a stranger, you wouldn't know it, but this used to be two exhibits. White tigers on the right and Malayan tigers on the left. They were split down the middle of what is now a filled in moat. Now it may be rockier than a zoo visit with a bunch of field trips, but I think this setup should be more than enough to keep Recon and Hindari plenty busy. At this point, it felt like I had the heart of a lion and the eye of the tiger. And that's why I was asked to leave the zoo, but not before. I could snag a few shots of what should be the healthiest animal in the world, because they say that laughter is the best medicine. What I just said makes no sense. Spotted hyenas cackle at everything, but a striped hyena is a comedian's worst nightmare. The only way to get a whisper out of them is if you scare them. When they are cautious, its mane will stand on end and make it look 30% larger. Ancient naturalists painted hyenas as cowardly grave robbers. Spots do the hunting, but it's true that stripes are mostly scavengers. But there's nothing wrong with that. They keep the environment healthy, and by munching on rotten carcasses, they clear the landscape and reduce the spread of disease. Where you'd think there'd be a bunch of roars from cats, they are drowned out by at least 10 waterfalls, and that constant noise will probably either make you thirsty or, you know. But for those champions that can hold it, Predators has, let's say, a waiting animal. The best kinds of raptors come pint-sized. They don't really feel like building their own nest, so they turn to piracy. A quarter of weaver bird nests will have pygmy falcons, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're not welcome. They might get a taste for weaver bird every now and then, but they still get rid of snakes and any other thing that poses a threat to their hosts, except themselves. You know what we haven't had in a while? A proper face reveal. So behold my silhouette. And behold, another set of birds. Can't get enough of them. I saw the southern bald ibis, whose heads look a little more shinier than the more commonly displayed northern bald ibis. On the ground, we have the wattled crane. It might not be tall enough to scale our eyeline from here, but it's still the largest crane in Africa. Six feet tall and a pretty hefty 20 pounds. I overheard someone ask a keeper, is it difficult to spot the cheetahs? And they said, no. They usually just come that way. For real though, cheetahs can be tough to point out. When they're surrounded by all that dry savanna grass, it blends in with the cat's tawny coat and their spots are supposed to mimic the shadows to break up their outline. And they sleep for 12 hours a day, which is nothing compared to a lion. But still, if it's not early morning or late afternoon, you'll find a very sleepy kitty. 
I know you didn't click on this video to learn about a wall, but you're gonna. You might notice the back wall isn't as clean as everything else, but it's how I was able to tell this is one of the old pride rocks. As you can see, I don't think anyone, animal or man, was taking pride in this. That wall to some is probably part of history. Thank goodness they made whatever was next to it history. One of you is gonna have to explain what this is to me. Anyways, that rock pile was obliterated into another waterfall that makes its way into the lion's exhibit all the way from up here. And it expels from a cave, which shows the backside of water because everyone deserves to see some O2H at some point in their lives. One side of the crevice shows cheetahs, the other shows one of nature's all-time greatest compositions. African painted dogs have something in common with spotted hyenas and no, they are not related, but they are pack hunters and they much prefer to unalive large prey, but it takes a lot of cooperation to bring them down. When a lion does this, they humanely bite the neck to cut off oxygen supply before feeding. Painted dogs consume their prey as they're still alive, but they don't really have a choice. They have to eat fast because they're just inviting a lion or other scavengers to come and take a bite or the whole meal. If you come here often, then I bet there's one animal that you miss the most, and that's the Nubian Ibex, a magnificent creature that's nearly non-existent in the United States, unfortunately. At least there's always the reminder that they were here by making their old exhibit visible. They even tease them on the master plan. Tough loss. However, myself and a lot of other zoo nerds around the country agree that we're glad that Fort Worth followed through with their promise of showing the world African Leopard. Look, Mr. Kitty, it's you. This is my Mr. Kitty. For the first time in years, we have a Black Panther on zoo tours. Black Panther is a colloquial term and doesn't actually refer to a specific species, which is why I like to mess with people by saying that they don't actually exist and I don't elaborate any further. You've heard of albinism, albinos. This captivating manifestation is the result of melanism, an increased amount of black or very dark pigmentation or melanin. This happens in 6% of jaguars, 11% of leopards, and at least 12 other kinds of small cats. What's really cool is that you can see that they are not 100% solid black, and all of the spots are still visible in sunlight. As far as this mind goes, Fort Worth is now one of two zoos in the special AZA club to play off like they have genetically pure, non-hybridized African leopards. Why would I say that about such a common animal? Well, they're actually very rare in zoos. Some believe these are genetically pure, but the zoo community is not so easily convinced. I'm not an expert, but if you ask me, it's far better than pretending like an Asian subspecies is from Africa, like a lot of American zoos continue to do. Pure or not, these siblings are still wonderful ambassadors to all leopards around the world. And that, my friends, is where this trail ends. If you are a new timer and you liked this video, I would really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. If you don't, there's plenty more where that came from. From the one member of Zoo Tours. As always, I would like to thank you all for watching. Stay wild and stay tuned for our next adventure.